Even the highly divided fans of the Star Wars universe admit that Pedro Pascal's performance as the main lead on The Mandalorian is one of the finest things the Star Wars universe has given its fans. Pascal has gained fame for his performance in popular shows and films such as Game of Thrones, Narcos, and Wonder Woman 1984. But what do we truly know about Pascal himself? In today's video, we'll be discussing the more obscure facts about Pedro Pascal that his fans don't know about. Stay tuned. First up, Pascal and initially thought he would be playing Boba Fett. Back in 2018, when Pascal was cast for the newest Star Wars unnamed project, which was later revealed to be The Mandalorian, he was under the impression that he would be portraying the role of the much-adored Boba Fett. He later revealed in an interview in 2019 that only went to meet Jon Favreau did he realize that he would in fact be playing The Mandalorian. He recounted the meeting, saying that Favreau's office was stocked with illustrations of the show, and there was a Boba Fett resembling character as well, so he thought that he must be getting cast as him. After listening to Favreau talk about the story and the themes, Pascal said that he asked about his casting, so Favreau just told him that he's the Mandalorian. But his fixation with the fan favorite character took his mind once toward Boba Fett once again. So Favreau actually had to repeat that his character is Mandalorian and not Boba Fett. Next, he suffered an injury on the Mandalorian set. The hero of the Mandalorian, Pascal, was wounded while he was filming the season finale of season one. Such was the severity of the injury that he required seven stitches to his nose and face. While one would be under the impression that this must have happened because of a stunt gone awry, it actually happened between the shooting offset. Distracted by his script, he was exiting the hair and makeup trailer when he collided with a piece of plywood. After getting stitched up at the hospital, Pascal returned to set to shoot the scene in which the Mandalorian removes his iconic helmet to help IG-11 him. A little heads up from us, next time when you're re-watching that moment, try to figure out where the fake blood finishes and Pascal's actual sutures begin. Up next, almost fittingly, he has been a Star Wars fan from birth. Pascal's excitement about starring in the show was large because of the prospect of success it would bring. And yet, this was not the only reason. The other reason was that he has been a massive fan of the Star Wars universe ever since he was an adolescent. He mentioned in an interview that in his his first meeting with Favreau, the first question he was asked was if he was a Star Wars fan, to which he replied that he did not have much of a choice in the matter considering the fact that he was born all the way back in 1975 and the first film was released only a short while later. He explained that the movie's universe was so impactful that it shaped the idea of sci-fi movies for that entire generation, and hence his childhood was greatly impacted by it as well. He explained that being placed in a universe that has existed so vividly in your earliest imaginations was quite an unbelievable concept, near impossible to put into words. He had such a fanboy reaction to the experience and said that when he walked onto the set, it felt eerily similar to how a child feels when he visits an amusement park for the first time, and there appears to be an infinite number of adventures available to you. He compared the feeling of wearing the Mandalorian outfit at 40 years old as almost the same as being a seven-year-old all over again. Next, surprisingly, Pascal's favorite co-star on The Mandalorian set isn't Baby Yoda. As a fan of the show, you would think that Pascal's favorite person to work alongside on the set of The Mandalorian would be the puppet Grogu, his adopted kid, or even the experienced actor Carl Weathers. And yet, surprisingly, Pascal has revealed that the person he enjoys working with most on set would be Amy Sedaris, the recurrent co-star who has portrayed Peli Moto in two episodes. Moto is a Tatooine mechanic who goes on to develop a liking for Baby Yoda. Pascal explained his choice by saying that whenever Sedaris is on set, he will follow her around, telling her that he will be hanging out around her until it's time for her to wrap up. He does agree that Grogu is very adorable and he does love it, but he will always consider the person who makes him spit laugh into his helmet as a favorite. Next, Pascal does not plan on leaving the Star Wars universe. Last year in 2012, reports were going around that Pascal was inclined towards getting the Disney Plus show because of the negligible screen time he was getting in the role. The Mandalorian is nearly always is hidden behind the characteristic helmet, which is why Pascal almost always records his lines during the post-production, and most of the actual stunts and acting Mando does are done by other actors. After Pascal signed on to the new HBO miniseries, The Last of Us, the fans were afraid that this meant he would be bidding adieu to the show. But with the latest updates, the fans of the show and Pascal alike can breathe a sigh of relief, because reports have said that he has no plans to leave the Star Wars universe anytime soon. Next, his parents are granted 
granted political asylum. Pascal's parents were awarded political asylum by the United States, which explains why he initially grew up in California and subsequently in Texas. The reason why his parents fled Chile, their home country, was that at the time of his birth, they were both very prominent and vocal in the Chilean resistance movement against Augusto Pinochet's military dictatorship. They were also putting their support behind Pinochet's fiercest rival, Alanda, which unfortunately landed them into trouble, and their lives were in danger. And before acting, he was a competitive swimmer. Before he turned to acting, Pascal was a highly talented and super successful swimmer in his home state. He was so promising that he was competing in the Texas State Championships at the tender age of just 11. However, in order to commit more time to his theater and drama lessons, he ended up bidding adieu to the sport. Did you know his breakout role was in Game of Thrones? If you ever at any point have wondered why he looks so familiar, then there's a very good chance you saw him as Oberyn Martell, the Red Viper in the extremely popular show Game of Thrones. He was only featured in the show for season 4, and yet almost every fan of the show will know who he is. This was by no means Pascal's first acting role, but it was the role that put him on the map, and made his face a recognizable one in the public eye. He is also a big theater buff. Didn't we just tell you he left off a promising swimming career to pursue his theater aspirations? That's right, this macho actor is actually a big fan of going to the theater. I mean, how can you not like this guy? He has not only directed several theatrical productions in Los Angeles, but he has performed himself in some off-Broadway shows. Some of his off-Broadway work includes Maple and Vine by Jordan Harrison, Beauty of the Father by Nilo Cruz, Roberto Aguirre-Sacasa's Based on a Totally True Story, and Trista Baldwin's Sand. Next, personification of perseverance. Pascal lost 17 jobs in his early days. In past interviews, Pascal has repeatedly said that despite the fact that he had theater representation back in high school, he did not end up winning any parts, so he subsequently tried to make a career as a waiter. His bad luck followed him there, and he was absolutely not a decent waiter, and ended up getting fired from 17 different waiting jobs while he waited to get his big break as an actor. Next, he has somehow always played fathers. One would think that it's perhaps Pascal's highly admirable, loving nature that is the reason why his career has a quite peculiar trend of playing fathers or father figures. From playing Din Djarin in The Mandalorian to Maxwell Lord in Wonder Woman 1984, and recently in his HBO role as Joel Miller in The Last of Us, Pascal has become known as something of an accidental father figure. Lastly, Pascal was almost on Wonder Woman even before he got cast in 1984. Wrapping up our facts about this incredible man, the last fact we have for you is that the film Wonder Woman 1984 was quite ironically, in fact, the second Wonder Woman-centric project that he has been tied to. All the way back in 2011, he was all set to appear in a TV adaptation of Wonder Woman, but unfortunately for him, the show was never picked up. That's a wrap for this video. Will we see Pascal keep on reprising his negligible screen time role, or will Favreau have to look for a new Mandalorian? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.